the version of the Tetra Seed modulation called the Middle Way Memory Matrix Ritual. We have here Mark Davenport and Heidi Hornlein, who Hello. are our famous Wisdom Factory hosts. <laughs> and we have done some work earlier, which we have presented as a different YouTube program called the Gold Key Release. And just to put things in context, the Gold Key Release and the Middle Way Memory Matrix Ritual are attentional, intentional procedures that have effects on the content of consciousness and a person's ability to function in a creative way in life. So I use the term Tetra Seed or Tetra Seed Modulations. The Tetra Seed is a name I've given to the four facets of experience that give substance to our experience of life, those being attention, intention, memory, and imagination, which correspond to the terms that Ken Wilber and the Integral Group use, which instead of attention, they use communion. Instead of intention, they use agency. Instead of memory, they use agape. And instead of imagination, they use eros. And uh, this morning I came up with an, another way of framing those. And I'll give that to you right now because that will help clarify your understanding of my use of those terms. So attention and communion always have to do with locating an experience. So location. In order to have attention on something, you've got to locate it. In order to have communion with something, you have to have found it. So, location. Mm -hmm. Instead of intention, which corresponds to agency, another term for that is push. It's the push we have to have experience go a certain way. And along with eros or imagination, the word pull. Eros has a pull to it. It attracts us. So then we have location, push, pull, and the final one, agape, which corresponds to memory, is duration or durability, persistence in time. So we have push, pull, persistence, and location. That corresponds to attention, intention, memory, and imagination. And on an occasion where you have the leisure to stop viewing this and consider those, you'll be able to contemplate them into your experience and realize that they are very familiar, very familiar. Now I'm going to add one more piece of information to this, which is that attention, intention, memory, and imagination are actually formless aspects. They have no form in themselves. Attention doesn't have any form until you have content. Mm -hmm. Same thing with intention, memory, and imagination. As such, they are empty. And being empty, they are not separate from what is the formless source of those, which is the causal consciousness. It's formless causal being that gives rise to the first step of manifestation, which are the four aspects that we've been discussing, which are themselves empty. So they are emptiness coming out of emptiness, but they are a bridge into form. Another idea that can be contemplated into obviousness. So we've done the gold key release together, Heidi and Mark and I. And before we go forward, I'd like to open the space for you to if, tell me if there's anything you want to ask or tell from your prior experience. Oh, I I just had a question about what we just heard, mm -hmm. if I may. Sure. Which which terms do you plan to use? Uh, we'll use the familiar ones: uh, attention, intention, memory, and imagination. And in the upcoming procedure, there will be 
an additional term which is uh, corresponding to intention. It's refusal. We're going to be working with intention and refusal, which are a pair of opposites. Mm -hmm. And when I get into the introduction to the middle way memory matrix ritual and I explain what it's for, it will make much more sense than just that little answer just now. Okay. okay but we'll be using the familiar terms. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that I did it several times. Yes. For several, uh, for me alone. I now, we didn't find the recording anymore, so I did it for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I even sort of remember how it works. And in regard to what we did last time, when I said I want to be more agile, I feel like this. Mm -hmm. When I go up the the stairs, it's it's not heavy anymore. And today, when we did the bike ride, I was always far ahead of Mark. <laughs> yeah, she was. Yep. <laughs> I had to wait. <laughs> but women are so often ahead of men. Yes. <laughs> um, that's that's another story. But yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. No, I wanted to say that I not only believe that that works, but I, I think I have the evidence because mm -hmm. it's not by chance. They, all the, the different um, subjects I used it on seem to, to have changed. You know, for instance, uh, I don't know if you remember when I said, or, or did I do it with you, I don't know, that I wanted to, to be less big, let's say, you know, and less filled up, less stuffed. I think I did it Stuff. with you, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, yesterday or the other day, we were in Pilates, and people said, "Oh, did you lose weight?" I said, "Boo, I don't know." <laughs> you know? <laughs> it seems something to be go going on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I will say that the potentials of these procedures are barely explored yet. So Heidi just shared something which is beyond my experience and it's likely there's going to be a lot of stuff beyond my experience as we get into this because we're dealing with apparently the fundamental underpinnings of experience mm -hmm. below which there is nothing. There's just the emptiness of the causal. So very, very interesting what you said just now, Heidi. I don't realize that it is something <laughs> which you are marveling about. So doesn't seem so strange to me. No, to no. me neither. But you know, I had one thing to report since uh, the last time we were together. Also, <clears throat> we have been using the gold key uh, procedure using your audio instructions with the tone. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, of course, marched along at a very uh, predictable pace. Uh, but at one point, it was hard to find that uh, version, and so we used the printed version. And in my experience, then, I stayed a good deal longer on some things than I did on others. And it was quite a different experience, of uh, some of it extremely deep. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know where I was some of the time. I mean, I just, it didn't relate to my my normal uh, experience of time passing. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so it was a different experience. Mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting to me. Uh, I had put in the tone so that people could have all the time they want before mm -hmm. proceeding to the next step. But yeah, but the tone is not, you have to do something then. You have to switch on, switch off, and yes. this is a little bit, you know, not really um, inspiring, let's yeah. say. <laughs> okay. So we can then regard that as a teaching device, the audio yeah. with the tone, yeah. to the mm -hmm. point where you're familiar so that when you do it without it and with the written, just in case you lose your orientation, you can return to the written at your mm -hmm. own pace. So that's a good piece of information for me to learn how mm -hmm. people are using it. I never, of course, use the audio coaching or the written because I do it all internally as Heidi just described that she did. Yeah. But as, mm -hmm. a learn, as learning devices, the audio and the written will be helpful to people until they get their 
balance in the procedure. You know, and what I noticed when I did it out of memory, I heard your voice. And then when you said, for instance, and repeat to yourself, uh, and I said this to myself. Then I said, no, no, uh, you know, to, to, to repeat it, what you said in your memory, and to really say it is the difference. So I caught me and said, no, now I say that instead of saying, repeat to yourself, blah, blah, blah. You know, exactly. it's, it's a different layers of, it's, uh -huh. it's funny to, to experience that. <laughs> it's true. The more you take matters into your own hands, the deeper you can go. The whole thing is about empowerment, and empowerment means that you're in the driver's seat. Which is a little scary sometimes when I can imagine what I could wish for. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, that, that brings us to another point, which is the nature of these procedures seems to be that in order to do them successfully, you have to be honest with yourself and your motivations have to be clean and clear. Mm -hmm. If they're not, or if you're not honest with yourself, what will come up are either the falsity in yourself or the second thoughts you have about doing the procedure, and those will be what have to be dissolved. And sure. if you're not honest with yourself, you will not willingly dissolve them, and so yeah. they will stay in place. So there seems to be a, a fail-safe quality to these procedures that assures that they can only be used for the good. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting and good to hear. Reassuring. That's yeah. right. So if you have any duplicitous notions in yourself, two things may pertain. One is that they may really be inappropriate, in which case you won't be able to do them. The other is that they really are appropriate, but you have self-doubt, and that will clear up and open the way for you to do them. Mm -hmm. Good. So anything more to ask or tell? Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. What I have in mind is to take you through some preparatory steps that will help you to get more deeply anchored in those four facets of the Tetra Seed. And then after I check with you to make sure that you're ready, then we'll begin the first third of the middle way memory matrix ritual. And the reason for the first third idea is just to be sure that we stay within your capacity, that you don't get information overload, and that you can absorb more if you want to continue. Good, okay. because it's quite... Um, in <laughs> how do you say that in English? Uh, uh, it's quite an undertaking. It's quite a yeah to obligation. talk with you yeah. and be in these processes mm -hmm. with you. Afterwards, I'm often. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Me too. When I do them. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, let's start. Mm -hmm. The kitty is ready. All right then. <laughs> so we'll first. I think I'm first going to introduce the middle way memory matrix ritual, and then I'll go to preparation. Okay. okay. Now, whereas the gold key release is, as the name suggests, a procedure for getting unstuck in seemingly any area of life that you can reach with the procedure, the middle way memory matrix ritual is an instrument of self-knowledge it's self-revealing. It's not just a release procedure, it's a wisdom procedure. Mm -hmm. And as such, we use opposing directions of intention and pairs of mm, items we're working with in order to create contrast between them and between the intention to create and the intention to prevent creation. Mm -hmm. Contrast is the key term here because everything we perceive in life, whether internally, subjectively, or externally in life, requires contrast in order to perceive it. No contrast is like the situation of looking for a black cat in a coal bin at midnight. <laughs> Contrast illuminates. 
So what are called actually the pairs of opposites of duality, I prefer to refer to not as opposites, but contrasting conditions. Mm -hmm. okay. So in the process of doing the memory matrix ritual, you'll be bringing up pairs of opposites and contrasting items. And so the first step, of course, will be to select them. And that's the first step before we do the preparatory procedure, which is just a setup. I haven't even given a name to it yet, because actually I started experimenting with it this morning and discovered it's very interesting to do it this way. Got to have a, don't have to come up with a name for it before too long. So the first step will be for you to to select items with which you want to work something that may seem sticky to you, I suggest choosing the most difficult possible thing. Because it's no more difficult to do a difficult thing than an easy thing with this procedure. Okay. All right. So you just choose two. And I suggest that you write them down, just the names of them, just in case you get so spaced out you can't remember what they were. Okay. And you may choose to or may choose not to share what those are before we do the procedure. I'm going to be using just item A and item Z to indicate which we're working with. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to choose the pair, not just one. That's right. So you choose okay. one and okay. either choose something related to it in a similar way or something opposing it, but it should be meaningful or have some charge to you. Okay. I didn't get it uh, completely. The first one is what? Uh, the, the, what, I what, you want, what you want okay. to do. Okay, and the okay. second one? Is something related to it? Or something opposed to it. Okay. That you, if I got it right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're ready, I'll give you an example that I worked with this morning. Okay. Okay. What I worked with this morning, the pair was formless, or causal formlessness, and one taste. Oh, well, go for the big stuff. <laughs> you betcha. Now, here's the thing, of course. It's not even necessary to have a handle on those items. All you need is an intention toward mm -hmm. them, and not one that you uh, conjure into existence for the purpose of this exercise, but one that feels meaningful to you, That is, that has some charge to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I have a little bit less spiritual thing, a little bit more down to earth. I, I have written, I want to have 15 kilos less and feeling healthy. And then as a related thing, nice clothing, you know, to be, to, to, yeah, to, to show up in a, in a, in a good way. I think Expert. those are, are good, except I would simplify the first one. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be remembering that word stream at every step. Mm -hmm. So something <laughs> more Blue concise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. This is the other one is a consequence anyway. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. All right. And I'm taking a much more Puritan approach here myself. I'll be working on honesty. And the opposite of that for me or the, the danger uh, is manipulation, the A and the Z. That's a great pair. I did an honesty one myself. I'm having trouble remembering what the counterpart was, but <laughs> I've done that one. Okay. Okay. Now, I will, I will tell you, by the way, why I chose the ones I chose this morning. I'm rereading Ken Wilber's book, One Taste. Uh -huh. And I discovered that I was getting ensnared by his descriptions. I was getting caught in the notion of I've really got to realize this or have I honestly had um, a recognition of these in myself 
all manner of problematic feelings about it. This is a snare. It's a pitfall of spiritual aspiration. Mm -hmm. See? So it's as much a entanglement to aspire to high spiritual realization as it is to aspire to financial wealth. There is no difference except that spiritual aspirations are probably worse because they, <laughs> they probably hook us harder than, than profane or secular desires. Mm -hmm. because, and the, the, yes. the, the reason for me is this profane thing or not profane is sacred. It seems sacred and so it's so much more value in it and so you might get stuck and clung onto it in, even, even more, you know. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in one of my write-ups I refer to sacred cows of spirituality mm -hmm. as things one might put through these procedures. Very valuable very easing when you get unhooked from the righteous aspirations because you can't hook on to one taste. Hmm. To do so actually blocks it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with causal formlessness. You can't get that out of the mind. It's not a mental item. Mm -hmm. So any desire to hook into it, to remember it, to desire it, actually takes you further away from it, which in fact is exactly what some of the traditional teachings say. Yeah. So you watch out for those things in spiritual teachings, no matter how sublime. As the saying goes in Zen, if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him. Mm -hmm. right? But even this becomes a sort of a, a slogan, you know. I, I think yeah. it's very, very, what, that's what I'm... I mean, we are in a different discussion now, but I am a little bit in distance of spiritual teachings because I see the people so much in, you know, exactly what you say, you know, so much a grab to it and feel superiority because they are saying these words and saying they do this and have this and whatever and give them so much value. But what you said that at the beginning that you might have more of these um, experiences, you know. Uh, this uh, seems to be, and I believed it too for a while, that seems to make clear that you are better, <laughs> you know. And this is such a trap. So I, I sort of negate a little bit the spiritual uh, path because I, I don't want to do it in this way. So mm -hmm. I think... Uh, yeah. This is spirituality, what you are teaching, mm -hmm. and what other people are teaching, but without, without this spiritual thing, <laughs> without, without the label. Uh, without yeah. the trappings. Trap yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Without and calling it, oh, I'm so spiritual. I mean, look <laughs> at this person, so spiritual. You know? yeah. Or spiritually inferior, where <laughs> that leads to golden shadow experiences. Mm -hmm. Either way. And this, uh, the yeah. memory matrix ritual disarms that and removes the snare. And by the way, even something like if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him, should also be put through the procedure so that that also is not entangling. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're free even from that. Yeah, because it can become a, can, um, a justification. You know, what I said before, it could be a justification for that for the other attitude. <laughs> That's right. And either one is as much a trap as the other. Yeah. yeah. And they're both mind-based. And anything you can put into a book is mind-based. And so it seems to me extremely helpful and relieving to dissolve the grip even of those spiritual sacred cows. Okay. That, that said, I think what you've chosen is just fine. And what I'll do now is take you through a preparatory procedure for getting your attention anchored into the items you've chosen. And as I said, I'll just be saying item A and item Z. Mm -hmm. okay. So, before we begin, anything else to ask or tell? I just write it down so I know which one. Oh, it's not B. B probably comes later. <laughs> so nah, I just chose Z because it's an extreme opposite and it's easier to distinguish. 
Add zeta. Zeta. Oh, okay. Alpha, omega. Uh, this is okay. my incapacity of language. Uh, well, you know, in Europe they say zeta or z. Tell them about that and joke. What joke? About improve your English. Oh, we, we will send Believe you an, yeah. a video. This Somebody shared it with me. It's it's hilarious. sad, but hilarious. Which, this is a, an example of what me, happened to me just what now. What just happened to her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to give myself a little aid here, just because this little thing I'm about to take you, take you through is so new. I'm going to give myself a reminder. But you must I keep your microphone nearby. I'll be right back. Okay. Looks like I'm not going anywhere. I'm trying to try there we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Keep your microphone nearer to your mouth. Okay, I'm back and I'm first going to describe what we'll be doing. Yeah. You're still without video. And so are we. And that's a nope. little technical. You need to re. re there uh, we go. I'm just oh, okay. a technical yeah. glitch of the Hangout. Okay. We mute ourselves or do you need us to interact? Uh, keep your mic on. Keep your mic okay. on. So I'll be taking you through a sequence that goes like this. I'll say item attending to item A. No, attending to imagining item A. <laughs> okay. Then refusing to attend to imagining item A. Mm -hmm. So we have the plus and the minus. I get that. Okay. And we'll proceed from attending to imagining, imagining, intending, intending, remembering. And so we'll go through the steps of first doing it, then refusing to do it, and then doing it. And okay. the alternations. And as I coach you, this will be a lot easier than trying to keep this in your mind right now. Okay, so the, my point is that there'll be alternations. So, are we ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Attending, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to link these up. Attending to imagining item A. And let me know when you're ready. Okay. Refusing to attend to imagining item A. Attending to imagining item A. Now, refusing to intend, refu I'm sorry, refusing attending to imagining item A. Attending 
to imagining item A. Refusing to attend to imagining item A. Okay, now let's check in. How did that go for you? Uh, I had I had to laugh because it was so confusing, <laughs> and uh, which is not bad. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm enjoying um, the trick, shall we say, and and letting it happen. Mm -hmm. And I just now got a heat experience out of that, which I often have when something is moving. <laughs> you got a heat experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one of the phenomena, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> throwing off a lot of body heat is common when these procedures are run. This is what mm -hmm. I've noticed, getting overheated evenly. Okay. So that was just to check to make sure that you were getting it. But Mark, I didn't get that you got the experience of attending to imagining and refusing to attend to imagining. Oh yeah, that that is that is why I chuckled because it was just you know, okay, now don't do that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 I don't I don't have a problem with that unless you think there's something I, I'm, I'm missing. No, no, I'm just making sure you get it before we go to the lengths of running through this. Oh, yeah. I hmm. did, too. Uh, I got it. And when do you first presented it, it was the immediate thing, mm -hmm. the, before we even started uh, the process, when you said you would say, say that. Now I had a little bit more, needed a little bit more time to get it clear. And the refusing to attend, it sometimes came quick, sometimes not so quick. Mm -hmm. But I... I I felt what it what it means, you know. Mm -hmm. I sort of know what it means when I refuse to <laughs> yeah. to in, in, attend to something nice. <laughs> so now I'm going to explain a little something about this, which okay. is that there are certain things in our experience that we don't want to experience. Sure. And so if I say attend to imagining it, and you don't want to experience mixed in with attending to imagining it is going to be not wanting to. Mm -hmm. So when you feel that and then we flip to the other side, refusing, you integrate the refusal instead of trying to override it. Yes. And then when you return to the, the positive version, it's clearer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it is. Now, we'll be doing just one set of alternations. But wait a minute. Yeah. Is it that uh, that it becomes more difficult than the refusing thing when it is more ingrained, the positive part? Mm -hmm. After you have done the refusal the first time and you said it is um, uh, making stronger the intentional part, the attention to... attention to... Im Imagination. What did we say? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I'll take you through those combinations as we go through, but I yeah, understand I your question. Yeah. And no, you're not going to be reinforcing the refusal. You're going to be making it conscious. When mm -hmm. you make it conscious, you make it voluntary, mm -hmm. which means that when you switch, it's no longer happening against your will. And it took mm -hmm. me longer to switch. So does it does it mean that? No, generally it's because it's dissolving the mind and mm -hmm. your concentration starts to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And so yes. it takes more deliberateness to bring it into existence. There's mm -hmm. a difference between having difficulty remembering the step and doing it from feeling the opposition to doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now let's okay. do a quick intermediate thing. You got much quieter. Um, your microphone, did you turn it down or change it some way? No, we put it in the middle of us. Maybe we're further away from it now. Maybe we speak slower, uh, lower. Maybe it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like uh, either the volume got turned down or the microphone yeah. is further Let away. Let me see yeah. if I can if I can do something here with the microphone, but I don't think 
It is, um, yeah, no, it's working, this one. Yeah, it is. It's registering. Yeah, so that's not the one. I have to go. Control room. You can see in the control room if you have, uh, uh, you can make us um, louder when you go in the control room. I cannot do it because you, it's your call. Yeah. Okay, let me check that. Hmm. I thought we just became quieter already. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think that's very possible that, yeah. that we are. I can also put quieter. something here a little more on the microphone, just a little more, but it's, I didn't change anything in between. No. I've just boosted yours from okay, the okay. control room. So. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's where the volume's okay now? Yeah, that's adequate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be starting with the negative, the refusal mm -hmm. for this series here. Okay. Started you out with the positive version. I think it would have been more confusing if we had, start, had started with the refusal part. But now that you understand why, we're going to start with the refusal. We'll go refuse and do it refuse, then do it, refuse, and do it. Mm -hmm. So you'll end up on the do it side. Okay. Okay. So are we ready? Yes. yes. Okay. So refuse to attend to imagining item A. Attend to imagining item A. Refuse to attend to imagining item A. Now, attend to imagining item A. Yeah. yeah. Refuse to attend to imagining item A. Attend to imagining item A. <laughs> okay, good. Now, That's refuse okay. to imagine intending item A. Okay, wait. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Difficult. Imagine intending item A. Refuse to imagine intending item A. Now, imagine intending item A. Now refuse to imagine intending item A. Now imagine intending item A. Good. Now refuse to intend remembering item A.
Now intend remembering item A. Now refuse to intend remembering item A. Now intend to remember item A. Now refuse to intend to remember item A. Now intend remembering item A. Now refuse in to intend remembering item A. Now intend remembering item A. Now refuse to remember attending to item A. Now intend to remember attending to item A. Now refuse to remember attending to item A. Now remember attending to item A. Good. Let's check in. How did that go? Uh, I continued my giggles <laughs> because I, I couldn't refuse to do something without actually remembering that something. Yeah. Without actually, the, the, the negative was not, did not cancel out. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, the, the refusal did not cancel out the process. For me, it was, I giggled in a different way. Let me see if I can get it back. When, for instance, I need, remember to attend to losing 15 kilos. Uh, okay, when I refuse to remember, <laughs> the inner <laughs> devil said, <laughs> you know, you don't have to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere later, uh, there was the exact opposite, but it was always uh, uh, connected with this, you know, that um, it made me really giggle. That. Oh. And at a certain point, quite at the end, I don't know, maybe four or five sentences before we finished, there was the other thing I came up when I tried to remember what it was, what I, mm -hmm. what the object was, item A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I came up instead of 15 kilos, I came up with 12 kilos. And I thought, <laughs> ah, maybe it's not the <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, I really had to chuckle about that. <laughs> well, that. That's something I experienced too, being unable to remember what was what item was. A now. Let me, you know, that's it's so like, far down the line of this. <laughs> of this procedure. Yeah. But I'm not worried about that. No, actually not. In fact, if there are times where you can't remember or can't call up the experience of the step, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Just do the next step when it time when it's coming, when it when the mm -hmm. time comes. Yeah. Anyway, it was funny. Yeah. It's sort of uh, as if I had caught me in some mm -hmm. you know, 
<laughs> sort of manipulation uh, thing. Not that I was manipulating, but it's a habitual pattern or habitual way of normally being, and I that was caught here. <laughs> like uh -huh. like you know, with the fish, you get it. Like yes, <laughs> here it is. You caught yourself at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You ready for item Z? Uh, oh, gosh. What was Z? Let me see. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. So refuse to attend to imagining item Z. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Attend to imagining item Z. Refuse to attend to imagining item Z. Attend to imagining item Z. Refuse to attend to imagining item Z. Attend to imagining item Z. Now, refuse to imagine intending item Z. Imagine intending item Z. Refuse to imagine intending item Z. Imagine intending item Z. Refuse to imagine intending item Z. Imagine intending item Z. Now refuse to intend remembering item Z. Intend remembering item Z. Refuse to intend remembering item Z. <laughs> now, intend remembering item Z. Now refuse to intend remembering item Z. Now intend remembering item Z. Good. Now, refuse to remember attending to item Z. <laughs> now, remember attending to item Z.
Now refuse to remember attending to item Z. Now remember attending to item Z. Now refuse to remember attending to item Z. Now remember attending to item Z. Good. Let's check in. How did that go? A lot more ambivalence. Uh, for, for a while, I, I found it more difficult <clears throat> to actually form anything that seemed like supporting item Z. Uh, and it was a lot easier to uh, forget supporting it in any way. Uh, and then as, as we proceeded, <clears throat> that really changed. Uh, not to the opposite, but just to an, e e can I say, equanimous <laughs> relationship with whether I was uh, doing the positive form or the refusal form. Good. Yeah. For me, the refusal form is, let's say, the default position and was always much easier than the attend or the positive form. And the refusal form was easy because I heard myself saying to myself, you don't want that, or you, you, you just, uh, you know, I, I sort of used words to, they came up, it's not that I made them up, but they came to, to, to guide me through these phrases, you know, mm -hmm. instead of only the word you said, mm -hmm. I had, uh, I heard voices talking. Mm -hmm. You don't want that, or something like that, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> no, it was funny. But, you know, it, the difference became less different. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant by equanimous, I think. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. Okay. What about your ability to put your attention on item A and item Z? Just now? Just as a result of going through this. Oh, this is a little bit difficult. Oh. Was it harder they are still that? there, but they are like behind mm -hmm. your screen here, yeah, behind you and your... Uh, they're removed. <laughs> no, removed not. Uh, not, not they are no, further no, away. I mean, they're further, that's what I mean by, further, by mm -hmm. removed, further away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds like you got more equality between the refusal form and the intending form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So this was just a preparatory step. This Please. is highly <laughs> experimental. I just did it for the first time this morning. It's revealing in its own right about things that we may think or feel we want, that behind that there may be an internal opposition to the thing mm -hmm. that we Absolutely. believe we want. Sure. Thanks. Absolutely. And I see it very much in my case with what I have chosen. It is a belief system which is there behind, which is not necessarily mine. Uh, it became mine for sure, but you know, it it was nurtured by something else. There's something else underneath. What I'm yeah, when I think about it, I know what it is. Go ahead. <laughs> For instance, my refusal to dress up nicely as a woman, no? I do it normally when I did it when when I went into concerts and in evening dress and so I played the role of a woman. But normally I go around in trousers and I like it and everything. I think it came lately out of the desire to, to be the third boy in the family and not the first girl. <laughs> mm. you know? I think this is, the, and to to need to be a man to be 
recognized uh, to be somebody in the world. I think that's still quite active. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting insight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've gotten a taste of the effect of contrasting things. In this case, you were just contrasting, intending something and refusing it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, in the middle way memory matrix ritual, you'll be contrasting item A and item Z against each other in both the intending form and the refusing form. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why I call it a matrix. We're going mm -hmm. to be cross-connecting every possible combination, and that mm -hmm. makes this procedure extremely useful for very difficult conditions whose nature, whose trouble sources remain hidden. We don't understand it. We can't get a handle on it. It seems to elude us. And this procedure brings these things plainly to the surface. Okay. So they, there are a series of steps in the middle way memory matrix ritual, the first of which is to do gold key release on item A and item Z. Then you'll be looking at the intending and resisting forms of item A, the intending and resisting forms or refusing forms of item B. Then we'll be doing contrast between item A and item B in both the intending form oh. and the refusing form. Did I miss something? You said A and B, not A and Z? Well, it's possible I made a mumble. I meant okay. Z. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, just, I was uh, a little bit zoomed out. I I think right. I'm sort of at the at the <laughs> edge of what I can do for today. Mm -hmm. Shall we do it another day? Or is it necessarily that you do it one after the other? It's good to do them one after the other, as the first procedure you just did was preparation. Okay, so mm -hmm. then <coughs> let's try it just once through. And remember, if you can't get something to come up, that's okay. Just do the next step when it comes. Okay. All right. You'll be surprised to find that if something doesn't come up in one step, something may easily come up in the next step. Mm -hmm. And it has more to do with our internal mind structure than it has to do with the material itself, the structure of our relationship to it. Mm -hmm. And then that's a very abstract statement. It will get obvious and concrete in okay. experience. Well, for, uh, for what it's worth, my current state is one of quite calm mm -hmm. buzz in my head. Just, boo. Oh, I wait. feel somehow... I cannot define it, <clears throat> but it's a little bit like tired, it's a little bit like mm -hmm. a little bit like ooh, mm -hmm. and a little bit like in meditation. Yeah. It's all this together. Mm -hmm. I'm not really tired. I know I can go on, but there is this refusal part which says, oh God, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling, by the way. <laughs> what I found it is as soon as I get started again, it's easy. Okay, let's start. Go uh, on. Go okay. ahead. So for item A, I'll coach you through the gold key release. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll check in. Then I'll coach you through item B, a Z gold key release. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. So get an experience of item A. Okay. okay. Notice its location in you, its size and shape. Okay. Notice its intensity. Notice the intensity of your intention toward it, about it, and in it. Notice how it all matters.
Notice how it mattering involves you. Mm -hmm. Think to yourself, it's true, it's true, it's untrue, it's untrue, it's untrue. Notice how feeling, it's true, involves remembering. Notice how feeling, it's untrue, involves remembering. <coughs> Notice how remembering involves imagining. Stop imagining. Let it dissolve and dissipate. Awaken. Get a sense of item Z. Notice its location in you, its size and shape. Notice its intensity. Notice the intensity of your intention toward it, about it, and in it. Notice how it all matters. Notice how it mattering involves you. Oh, is that screen frozen? Mm -hmm. oh. Stop imagining. <laughs> Stop remembering. Oh, no, first he says, it's true. It's true. It's and it's and notice that knowing that it is true and then it is and involves remembering. remembering and notice that remembering involves imagining stop remembering stop imagining Awaken. <laughs> he fell out. Mm -hmm. I hope he comes back. Yeah. I send it to him.
So how was it for you? Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little distracted by this interruption. Yeah, sure. It was intense. It was quite intense. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Well. I had, let me see what it was. Oh, I forgot it. Mm. It is so easy to forget. It is. Well, it was intense. I know that. I get. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, really saw what the struggle was. I really saw, you know, what my motivation was, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why it was such a strong and all too frequently chosen option. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find Lawrence in another way. Uh -huh. There's another. Both chats. Yeah. So I guess we are still on uh, on camera. So I guess when we talk about it just now, I, it is so difficult to remember that. But there was something that was, which was uh, remarkable in my experience. Mm -hmm. it, it was with me too. Uh, I, I understood, you know, the the roots of deception, what the motivation for it was, why I felt I had to manipulate, I had this terrible fear in my chest, and it was huge, it was all the way across, it was almost a panic feeling as I, as I thought about it, that if I did not please these people, placate them somehow, something terrible would happen, I don't know who that was. You know, what hops to mind immediately is my father, but I don't know mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he often occupies that role in my, my memory, but uh, whether that was actually the, what happened, I don't know. But that's just how it's <clears throat> existing within me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The okay. truth is not good enough. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, so you have to change the truth yeah. to make it more shiny or more... Yeah. Uh, then it's not the truth anymore. Then it's not the truth. But it's... Uh, well, but it's shiny. I think it's more effective. Uh, well, that's that's the motivation to make it mm -hmm. seem yeah. Yeah. better than the truth. Yeah. The truth has is, can be kind of rough, kind of... Uh, uh, can even be injurious, perhaps. I got a little bit the question, why do we release that, what we have the intention towards? What was the object we want to um, create? This would be a question I would have for him. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, okay, so you two were able to complete the gold key release. Yeah, and we, chat, we chatted about the experience a bit. All right, and we'll see how much got recorded. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's, that's fine. Hmm. Nothing can get lost in this because the gold key release is a dissolving procedure. So yeah. you didn't lose anything by the disconnection. And if you're up for it, we can then proceed into the, into the next step. Are you up mm -hmm. for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So... Intend item A. Mm -hmm. Refuse item A. Feel intending and refusing item A at the same time. 
It's easy. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> now, experience refusing intending item A. Now, intend refusing item Z. Now refuse intending item Z. Okay. Now intend item A, intend item Z. Mm -hmm. Now intend item Z, intend item A. Now intend item A, mm -mm, refuse item A, refuse item Z. Now refuse item Z, refuse item A. Now intend item A, refuse item A. Now refuse item A, intend item A. Now intend item Z, refuse item Z. Now refuse item Z, Intend item Z. Now intend item A, refuse item Z. Refuse item Z, intend item A. Now refuse item A, intend item Z. Intend item Z, refuse item A. Now intend item A, refuse item A, experience item Z. Now refuse item A, intend item A, experience item Z. <laughs> now intend item Z, refuse item Z, experience item A. Now refuse item Z, intend item Z, experience item A. Okay, that's the first third. Let's check in on that. Hmm. It's somehow funny because oh. it is different when you say first refuse and then intend or the other way around. Yes, mm -hmm. order makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, completely. And mm -hmm. uh, also then refuse and intend one thing and experience the other. <laughs> Sometimes it was funny. <laughs> but I know every one of those combinations. I know them all. I know them too. Yes. I had a, a vivid experience yeah. of, mm -hmm. of remembering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Isn't it interesting? Order makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And in our lives, we both intend and refuse something, and 
that's changes our relationship to its the counterpart. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really a feeling. It's not so much uh, here. I I could come up with words uh, always uh, in my head somehow. Some some. But it's a but it's, it's sort of a body feeling, and it, ah. it changes when mm -hmm. when the order is. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, sometimes let's say it's like this, and the other way is like this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Too damn much honesty for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, in, in terms of uh, experiencing everything, there, 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 there's, there, there's a difficulty, there's a pain in going through each of those emotional states that right. they bring up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And it's mm -hmm. a pain that was always there before, but it was unconscious. Yeah. I don't feel a pain. No. This is a different, it's a different layer. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I'm working on, that's not so... Yeah. It's more on the realm of the beliefs yeah. and not so mm -hmm. much on... Emotions. Yeah, emotions. Yeah, okay. Okay. Different experiences. Yeah. Now, I want to check in with you on saturation. Yeah, I think I'm I'm done. Okay, yeah. That, that's what I felt also. Yeah. yeah. We are satiated, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think. It might yeah. be interesting just in the next period of time to see how these issues have been altered. Sure. Mm -hmm. see, what you're seeing in this process is we're closing all the loopholes. Mm -hmm. There's no escape. We're getting every possible combination and then some we didn't think of before <laughs> in order to reveal ourselves to ourselves. Let's check in on that. Did you get an experience of self-revelation? Oh, Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> I think we said this when we were off camera, but uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I was I was concerned about honesty versus manipulation, and coming to understand that manipulation was a s sort of childhood uh, understanding that the truth was not good enough. Mm. That I would I would not get the desired result with the truth. People would not think the way I wanted them to think of me with the truth. I had to polish it. I had to make it shinier than the truth. Mm. And my father was somehow the uh, the bad guy in this business. Whether that's fair to him or not, I don't know. But uh, that's that's how it occurred to me mm -hmm. looking at it. And it was. It was it was painful to experience that fear of his disapproval of the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What was your question? I'm somewhere somewhere else. I don't know, but I've forgotten your question. <laughs> oh, about self revelation. Does this procedure reveal things to you about yourself uh. that was not obvious before? Not really. I mean, uh, it's not nothing new. It's only a little clearer, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit more obvious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. So we finished this third with a set of triangles. Intend, refuse, and experience the other without intending or refusing. Mm-hmm. And the next section is series of triangles. And that, of course, will come another occasion. But it's also revelatory beyond what was revealed in the first section. Okay. We will see that. Right. Thank you for the moment. It oh, was... It this was. I don't. I, I word, could words go to, escape me. To bed now. I'm completely. 